If you're someone who's skeptical about investing, I'll be the first to tell you that I was skeptical at first too. And here I am, five years later, kicking myself for not investing sooner. And I'm gonna spend this entire video telling you exactly why. First and foremost, when I talk about investing in this video specifically, I'm talking about the stock market. And there's three things I'm gonna go over that I want you to keep in mind when you think about how skeptical you are about investing because it really, really is a daunting thing. It can be very intimidating, and you hear all these horror stories of people losing their money, and you probably heard of recessions and economic downturns and all kinds of things that have wiped people's 401ks and all their life savings and all that stuff. So I'm really just here to set the record straight and give you some clarity around investing in general. If you pay very close attention, this video has the potential to help you make a lot of money. And this video, by the way, is free. So we're gonna get into it. The first thing I wanna talk about is my mistake and why I'm kicking myself to this day because I didn't start investing much sooner. And I'll start this off with a general statement. Everyone wants to make money. Everyone wants to make a lot of money until you put proven ways to make money in front of them and then they want to get skeptical. I have just described myself. So let me tell you a story real quick. When I graduated from college, I was making pretty decent money, started living on my own, I was 21 years old, fresh into a management position. I wasn't the biggest fan. In fact, I hated my job, but that's another story for another day. But it got me thinking, like when I, whenever I wasn't working, it really got me thinking, what else can I do on the side to make money so I'm not relying on this piece of crap job for my whole life? That was literally what I thought. And you know, naturally I went through YouTube videos and this was where I was pretty much getting my foundation together. I was pretty much figuring out how to save, you know, the best way to get out of debt, stuff like that, stuff that they don't teach you in school for some ungodly reason. But anyway, I kind of went down a rabbit hole and then next thing I came across the concept of passive income, which if you don't know what that is, it's pretty much making money in your sleep, making money around the clock, no matter what you're doing, you're making money. So you're not working for every hour, you're just making passive income, but that requires a lot of work up front, typically. And then I got into all these videos about invest in yourself, don't worry about the stock market, don't worry about real estate, invest in yourself first, build a really booming business that creates a massive amount of passive income that you then invest in the stock market. And my views about personal finances were definitely way different back then, but now, today, there is nothing I disagree with more. That's bad advice. I don't care what anybody says, that is not good advice. Because I took that advice and I'm gonna tell you the adverse effects of that advice. Instead of investing into the stock market, instead of investing into Bitcoin or Ethereum early on, I invested in myself. And I was approached by this really awesome group of people. They're really, really, really cool people. I just don't agree with the business model it was this MLM group where you sell products and what you do is you quote unquote invest in yourself, i.e. buying four to six hundred dollars worth of products, some of which you can sell, but then proceeding to tell other people about it and recruiting other people so that they can then buy their set of 400 to 600 dollar products so that you then get a small cut of what they spend every month on the products. And then whatever they sell, you also get a small cut of that too. And then it's like a whole chain of it. And a lot of people called it a pyramid scheme and blah, blah, blah. This is not the video to get into that. I'm just telling you, this was how I invested in myself. And I did, and don't get me wrong, I did learn a lot about business, about personal growth, about perseverance. I learned a lot about that stuff. I only did it for like a year and some change. But the stuff that I did learn is stuff that anyone can learn any given day of the week just by watching YouTube videos. And I was just talking to my good friend Josh from back home about this the other day. It was a good learning experience, but was it worth all the money? Absolutely not. And the advice that I was given within this group, I was like, you know, I'm thinking about investing in stocks. I'm thinking about, you know, looking into this and that. They're like, you know, I, I really recommend that you build your business first and you put all your money into your business. And then once your business grows and starts producing income for you, then start putting money into the stock market. I am kicking myself to this day because I listened to that, bro. I am kicking myself so hard. And I partially appreciate making that mistake because now I can give this advice to someone else so that they hopefully won't make the same mistakes I did. But yeah, I was so skeptical about the stock market because they would put things in my head like, well, what if the stock market crashes? Then what? You know, then you lose all your money, blah, blah, blah. Like, these are the things 
that really made me not invest early on. And by the way, the stock market didn't crash during that time. This was like 2017, 2018. The stock market was doing just fine. But again, we'll, we'll get into we'll get into that. But the reason that I'm kicking myself is because of this. I was already spending like between $400 and $600 a month on these products, which by the way, I didn't sell, except for like my, my mom, like my family, you know what I mean? And I didn't make much of anything from selling them to my family, you get what I'm saying? But I do appreciate the support if you're watching this. <laughs> but now I just think about, if I, would've, if I would've put that same $400 or $600 into the stock market every single month back then, oh man. I'd be walking around here throwing a diamond cane. I would be, I would be, I would be having it going on. And I didn't take that advice and I never invested in myself in that way. I could have invested in myself by buying books or even buying courses that, all of that stuff is cheaper than $600 a month. I don't know any courses you gotta spend that much money a month. You might spend $300 one time or $500 one time or even $1,000 one time. That's still less money than $600 times 12. And sure, you could argue that I didn't know that much about stocks back then, but do you know how easy it is to learn about stocks? Just like on the internet or just by going to the library and purchasing some books on stock investing and learning the different strategies and understanding which one benefits you the most. Like sure, that stuff might be boring to read, but again, everybody wants to make money until they're given a proven way to do it. And then they either get bored to death of it or they get too skeptical about it. And for me, I don't know about you, but I'm willing to go through a little bit of boredom if that means it's gonna improve my life in the future. That's what I did in school. That's why I went, I went to college. You think that was fun the whole time? No. I'm getting excited. Let me, let me calm down a little bit. It's supposed to be a chill night, chill night. But you get what I'm saying though? But just to put it into perspective, companies that I had faith in back then, like Apple, Microsoft, Google, oh man. Back then, back in 2017, let me let me do this. I'm, I'm going to show you how much it costed back in 2017, 2018 time. And you'll see exactly why I'm kicking myself. Was I making as much money back then as I was making now? No, but I still had a bunch of disposable income. And even though I'm pretty much making double now what I'm making back then, like if I would have still invested consistently back then, I would be sitting pretty right now, man. I would be sitting on a gold mine right now. So let me pull this up. Let's look at, I'm just gonna pull up my Weeble account. So let's check out, oh, I already have Apple up here. So let's check out Apple. So we're looking at the five year. So, and it has the date, it's a little small. So as y'all can see, back in like January, February, 2018, Apple was worth like $43. And right now I'll remind you, the stock market is pretty much down right now and Apple's down right now. And you know how much Apple's worth right now? 137, when it's down. In 2018, Apple was up and it was $43. So again, $600 a month. You're telling me I couldn't have bought a few shares of Apple every month? I could have bought five, 10 shares of Apple and still not burnt through that whole $600. And it would have just grown and grown and grown. Let's look at Microsoft. Really, really good picks right here. Again, well, this is back 2017. 2017, Microsoft was like $92. And in 2018, like towards the end of the year, they hit a little dip, which was like 76 or so dollars. But you get what I'm saying? They were way cheaper back then. And this is the biggest lesson behind investing. You buy early on and you hold for the long term, which I'll, I'll get to in a second. But five years ago, I could have bought a bunch of Apple and Microsoft stocks. So even if they were the only two companies I had faith in, and they are the top two right now, by the way, but if they were the only two I had faith in, they would have grown so much over that course of time. And I just got, I could have just kept buying them, buying them every month. My investment accounts would be looking crazy right now, especially when we talk about how they grow, but I'm gonna to get to that, I promise you. Which this actually leads me to my next point. If you're skeptical about investing, you, you've got to look into this. And this is a really good philosophy that I don't think a lot of people have grasped yet. Investing isn't so scary when you actually hold what you invest in for the long term. I'm talking about a generation. I'm talking 20 years or more. And at the very minimum, 10 years. But investing isn't so scary when you hold 
for the long term and you invest in the top businesses in the world. I mean, the top of the top. I'm not just talking about a business that you're interested in or a place that you like to shop at or a product that you really like. For example, me personally, I wouldn't touch Netflix in the stock market because the chart does not look good to me. The amount of debt they're in and the way their business model is right now is not attractive to me. I don't agree with how they do business. I do watch Netflix, but I don't agree with how they do business. But if you look at Apple and Microsoft, they have ingenious business models. Same thing for Google, same thing for Amazon. See, these are companies that I have and would put money in. Fantastic companies, right? But what makes investing scary is when people try to invest their money into the stock market to get a, to get a quick buck because they're following all these threads on like Reddit and stuff saying, yeah, to the moon, run it up, woo. Like the GameStop and AMC thing. Now, a lot of people did make a lot of money doing that and I commend them 100%, but at the same time, a lot of people lost money as well. Me personally, even though, yes, I could have probably made a quick buck in doing that and, and you know selling them once they reached the high. But here's the thing with that though. My investing strategy is about long-term, so I don't really care about the, yeah, you can make $500 today off of this or like, no, I'm not interested in making a quick buck. I'm interested in holding the best businesses for the long term because they're going to have the smallest drawdown and they're going to grow the most consistently over time. God, I'm congested. And you know, there's some days where I'm just minding my own business. Then I just look at the stock market. I done made six, seven, eight hundred dollars that day just by holding the best businesses. And what do you think is gonna happen if I just let that money sit and compound over time? It's only gonna grow, like sure there's gonna be dips and there's gonna be peaks, but like for the most part, it grows pretty consistently, especially when you choose the best businesses. So it doesn't have to be for a quick buck. And for those who are afraid of recessions, like when the stock market starts hitting bottoms like we're about to enter into right now, I get happy when the prices of my favorite companies go down below where they were for the last like 12 or even 24 months. Because you know what? It's basically saying that stock went back in time. It's like if Apple dropped again back to like $53 or $70, I'd be like, man, it's dropped back down to 2017 prices. So that gives me the chance I had back then to then get those stocks again at that price. You get what I'm saying? But that's if the business hasn't changed fundamentally, the CEO is still the same, they're still making good strides toward the business. Like there's nothing wrong with the business, but the stock market's just down right now. Cool, I'm gonna buy, like let Apple drop down to $53. I will, I will pour so much money into Apple, <laughs> sheesh, I won't be able to see straight. I'm trying to tell you right now because I know what that stock is capable of. But I've done my due diligence, I've done my research, I know that company very, very well. I understand the vision of the company going forward and I know future partnerships that they have going on. Like, that's gonna add more value to the business and it's gonna definitely add more value to the shareholder. I ain't trying to bore you now, but I think it's super cool to be a partial owner of a business such as Apple. And anybody could go on their phone right now and buy a share of Apple. Nothing is stopping you, unless it's during the weekend. If, if it's during the weekend, you can't buy nothing because, you know, business hours. All jokes aside, that's what it's all about. So like, don't be afraid of recessions. Just, I would say this, if you're gonna invest in individual stocks, you want to invest in the best businesses and you don't wanna invest in like 20 different stocks or 30 different stocks. It's like, yeah, I own Walmart, Amazon, Google, Adobe, and I just named really good stocks. But you get the idea, like if you invest in 20 different companies, there's a chance that you might invest in five or six companies that aren't doing so well. Like let's say Netflix and Zoom were part of that, right? And they, and they are on a steady decline right now. And I'm not saying just because a stock drops is bad, but I know that I don't agree with both of those business models and I know that they have no competition against their competition, which happens to be Google, Microsoft, stuff like that. Like I, they are not messing with their competition right now. They can't see Microsoft or Google in business at all. They have no competitive advantage over them. And so what I'm saying is if you invest in 20 different companies and you invest in some really good ones, but also really bad ones, the bad ones can drag your whole portfolio down. Whereas if you didn't invest in the bad ones in the first place, you might be up 20% versus being negative 4%. I'm getting all fired up. I got to slow down some with these numbers. But you got to look at this. I'm going to keep bringing up Apple and Microsoft, because I feel like everybody can kind of relate to both of these, right? So we're on Microsoft right now. So check this out. This is just looking over the last five years. 
if you've ever taken any classes or if anyone's ever told you about investing and they give you investing advice, they tell you that like 4% year over year return is good, right? With companies like Apple and Microsoft, they're tech companies, so they definitely have a lot of growth. And these are examples of tech companies that have a very small drawdown, unlike other tech companies that might be like $1,000 a day, $200 the next day, $700 the next day, that are really up and down and volatile. Microsoft and Apple are not like this. And so if we look at the last five years of Microsoft, if we look at this green percentage here on the screen, it's grown 274.97% in the last five years. If you do the math, that's definitely more than 4% a year. You get what I'm saying? It's more like 40 plus percent year over year on average. But then if we look over the lifetime, Microsoft definitely has some dips and valleys at first, but we're looking over the years between 1986 all the way up to 2022. And so this is why I'm saying holding for the long term is so important. Look at how far up the stock is going. This thing is like this thing is what the kids would say going to the moon. Like it's really skyrocketing and it's not done yet. It's going to keep going up like that because they're still growing their business. But if, but the reason I bring up the max is because it shows from 1986 all the way up till now. Right. And so if we look how much how much did it grow? Five hundred and forty thousand four hundred and seventy six point nine two percent. You see what I'm saying? That's definitely more than 4% year over year. So you're going to get a much better return with companies like Apple like Apple and Microsoft. Let's look at Apple. Sheesh. Apple's ridiculous. <laughs> but anyway, Apple IPO'd back in 1980 as well. But we're going to look at the five-year one first. So over the last five years, 288.91%. That's how much it grew. And then if we look over the max since 1980, look, this thing started at the, literally, this is start at the bottom, now we here type of stock. This is a this is a stock that has consistently raised its value over time. Like at first it was kind of moving sideways and it was kind of at the bottom, but if you look, it's always gone up. And this return is crazy. 1,062,923.26%. Could you imagine? Like we think a million dollars is a lot, but think about a million and something percent of growth on top of a million dollars. Why do we think Warren Buffett is so successful with investing and why he's so rich? Because the majority of his portfolio was in Apple and he invested in Apple from the start a long time ago. We're talking hundreds of thousands of percentages on top of millions of dollars. So that is why I'm kicking myself. That is why I say it's not so scary holding long term. Who cares if the stock market crashed in between that long time that was the 20 years? If you kept the stock and it didn't go to zero, it's shooting back up. And Apple and Microsoft did not go to zero. You know why? Because they're two of the best companies in the world. You don't just invest in any company that someone told you, yeah, invest in this company because it's great. Doing no research. Like, yeah, you're probably going to lose money if you do that. Let me get off my soapbox. And the biggest frustration I have with skepticism about the stock market, or at least with my own skepticism about investing in the stock market, was this. I didn't have the information, but I also really didn't pursue the information as much as I should have. And there was an abundance of it at the time because we have the Internet. And even if we didn't have the Internet, we have books. I'm talking of experts, of people who have mentored, those who have mentored, those who have mentored Warren Buffett. So experts on top of experts have written the books on how to invest, what to avoid, what are investing mistakes, what strategies there are, which one best fits you. But I didn't invest. And I'm not about to sit here and be that guy to be like, well, I, I didn't have the information. They're keeping it from us, man, you know. Because, you know, everyone wants to blame the government and the 1% about, you know, not knowing certain things. But what are you doing to learn and educate yourself? And that's not necessarily directed to you. It's just a general question. And it's frankly a question I should have asked myself a long time ago. What am I doing to improve? What am I doing to learn about the, the stock market? What am I doing to learn about the quality of my investment? Because I could tell you the quality of my investment in the stock market back then would have been much greater, a, a much greater worth than the investment that I made in myself. You get what I mean?
And my biggest thing was I was chasing, literally chasing passive income because I was told time and time again that the MLM that I was part of was going to create such a substantial amount of passive income. And they were like, imagine starting off, you know, your first few months, $400 a month in passive income. Then that grows to $4,000, then $14,000. And I was just like, like if, like if this was a cartoon, my eyes would have had money signs in it, but it wasn't realistic. The specific MLM that I was part of wasn't realistic. And to this day, I still don't know a single person who did that with me who is making that passive income. To this day, besides like the top of the top people, which were already there in the first place. And everyone was talking about how it could be done in two to five years in such a short amount of time. But like really, again, it's not realistic. It's more like 10, 15 years. And that's if you stick with it. And that's if you're actually good at doing it. Everyone is not good at walking up to random people and selling products. Just saying. It's essentially sales, and there's nothing wrong with sales. It just wasn't the business model for me. MLM was not it for me. It's it's almost it's almost like telling somebody, hey, if you start a YouTube channel, you know, within two to five years, you're gonna definitely be making ten grand a month. Like it's not realistic. Like it can happen, but that doesn't mean that anybody can just turn the camera on and boom, they're making ten grand a month just a few short years later. Like it actually takes time. Like if you know nothing about YouTube and you get into YouTube. It's going to take some time. It's taken me some time. You know what I'm saying? It took me a while to even get monetized. I didn't do this to wake up one day and be rich because I got a million and something views on all my videos. Like that's that's not what I'm doing here. But anyways, that's not what I came here to talk about. This is what I came here to talk about. I was chasing passive income and pursuing the MLM and you know pursuing other ventures and just trying so hard to get uh, passive income. I was trying. I was trying affiliate marketing online. I was watching so many YouTube videos about how many YouTubers made passive income. And I was like, yeah, one day I'm going to make a YouTube channel and I'm going to make so much passive income. But I didn't have the time on my hands back then because I, I worked like 70 hours a week at that time. And I was just like, yeah, passive income. Yeah, invest in yourself now. Create a really booming business. Make some strong passive income. Invest that into the stock market. That was just so wrong. <laughs> and I hope you, you're seeing that because if I would have invested back then, Think of how how much percentages, think of how much percent, like I would have been up like a hundred and something percent on Apple and Microsoft if I would have invested back then five years ago, as you saw in the examples that I showed you just now. But another part of the information was I didn't I didn't get was this. You don't have to invest in individual stocks. Like if you're someone who really feels skeptical about that, you could invest in funds like ETFs or index funds. You can invest in the really, really, really good ones. I'm talking the ones that track the S&P 500, the best 500 businesses in the U.S. It's really like 508 holdings or something like that. But still, you, you can invest in something like VOO, which is an ETF, the Vanguard S&P 500 fund. And their chart is crazy, too. I'll put it up here on the screen. And that has the best 500 businesses. It has stuff like Apple, Microsoft, but it also has stuff like Procter & Gamble. It has Adobe, it has Costco, like it mixes it up. So it's not all, it's not just tech stock. It's also retail. It's also consumer. It's also financial, like JP Morgan's in there. Bank of America's in there. Like it really mixes them all up and it doesn't cost as much as all of them combined. It's like right now it's like 300 and something dollars for a fund that has literally stood the test of time. The S&P 500 has been around since, you know, recessions and all that stuff. And there's also another one like VTI. They have a few thousand companies in that one, but it's like mixing it up. It's like the total index, the total market index for Vanguard. This just includes like a bigger mix. And the biggest difference between like VOO and VTI is VOO is like specifically large market cap stocks versus VTI. It has small, mid and large market cap stocks. And that's important to know. The, that's the type of companies that are within these. And they both take the research out of it because all you got to do is look at their chart and look at their track record and know that they're good investments and then know the top companies that they're invested in that they're doing really well. And you can do research on those top companies. And that can help you figure out which companies you're going to actually invest in when you invest in the stock market. If you want to grow beyond your skepticism and say, you know what, I started off with index funds, which I do actually recommend you do, by the way. Or I start off with index funds and ETFs, but you know what? I'm going to research these top companies that they're invested in, especially if it's doing good, like VOO. And then you look at the top companies and you're like, you know what? 
I'm going to invest in Apple. I'm going to invest in Microsoft. I'm going to invest in NVIDIA. I'm going to research. And I'm going to look at the best prices to get into these best businesses. And I'm going to make myself and my family some money. I'm going to create some generational wealth. That's what it's all about. But I didn't have the information. I just thought all there was to the stock market was individual stock investing. I thought the only other option besides that was the 401k, which I already had, which I just started my job. So it's not like it was growing like crazy at the time. But that's it. Like, I just, I didn't have the information. And I'm going to reiterate this one more time because I think this should be the biggest take from the video, at least take from me my mistakes. I initially started my financial journey with, you know, saving and getting out of debt and all that other stuff, but also chasing passive income. But what they don't tell you is, and this is the information part that I really wanted to get to, but the thing they don't tell you is there's only a few ways, like you can probably count on one hand the amount of ways there are to create uh, passive income for a lifetime or for generations. And one is real estate, which we're not talking about in this video. And the other is the stock market. And within the stock market, you have stuff like stocks, bonds, index funds. But what we're focused on in this video is stocks, index funds, and ETFs. Those are the only ways that you can create real passive income that actually lasts you for years and years and years. I'm talking generations and generations. Look at Warren Buffett. Look at the best investors in the world. Look at the richest people in the world. They are invested in the stock market and or real estate. Now, I'm sure a lot of them do have businesses or they have really high paying careers that they were able to dump more money into it. But why? I think instead of the advice being told, Start a business, make some booming money, and make some crazy passive income. How about this? Work on that on the side while also investing into the stock market and researching the stock market and understanding how you can continue to create wealth for yourself. Because the only way you can really build wealth is one share at a time. And if you're not investing while you're building your business, once if your business doesn't take off, first of all, the stock price is just going to keep going up. As we saw in these examples, at least most of them, the good ones are going to keep going up. And it's going to be harder for you to build wealth because if you just buy one stock of Amazon, you're not going to become wealthy off of that. Even if it grows by 200%, you're not going to get wealthy off of that. But if you but if you buy several Amazon stocks and it goes up 200% over the course of the next 10 years, oh yeah, you're going to be looking good. So you have to keep that up. That's that's what I'm saying. So I'm not saying complete. I just don't believe that you should cut one thing for another, even with saving money. Like when people say, do you save money or get out of debt first? Well, prioritize one, but don't just cut off both of them. I would try to do both at the same time. But to me, the smarter thing to do would be prioritize saving, but then do what you can on your debt, even if that's paying off minimum payments, if the interest rate is low. See, y'all got me getting into something else completely different that has nothing to do with investing. But you get what I'm saying. You shouldn't just cut one aspiration off for another. There's, there's no reason why you can't invest some in your business and invest some in the stock market. There's no reason. Or you could invest some in yourself and some in the stock market. Like maybe back then I wouldn't have been able to afford to invest within the MLM and the stock market, but maybe I could just say, you know, screw the MLM. Let's just do the stock market today. Let's just do the stock market. And then when I invest in myself, I'm going to buy myself, let's say a course every other month, or I'm going to buy myself 10 books every month. I'm keeping the price down. You see what I'm saying? So that's my pet peeve with financial advice and stuff. And it really did build my skepticism around investing and as a result, I kind of came into investing late in the game outside of 401ks. But, you know, you know, everyone has their 401ks, but not everyone has their own individual account where they're putting their own money into or even a Roth IRA. A lot of people don't even know what a Roth IRA is. You get what I'm saying? And if you didn't know, a Roth IRA is a tax advantage account where you put money that's already been taxed into up to six thousand dollars. But once you hit your retirement age, once you pull that money out, it doesn't get taxed. Versus your 401k, the money that's going into it isn't being taxed, it's just coming straight from your paycheck. But once you pull it out during your retirement, it does get taxed. So people always ask which one is better, do both. But yeah, so that's the information that I wish I had back in the day 
that's what I wish I knew about the stock market back in the day. And I wish like I wasn't so skeptical because I did miss out on some big numbers. And I'm not about to sit around and whine about it, but I wanted to make this message specifically for you if you're someone who's skeptical about investing in the stock market because it's normal and that's how it is. And I feel you on that. But the moment you get beyond that skepticism is the moment where you can learn and build and grow. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I definitely enjoyed making it. It was really fun to make it. I love talking about the stock market. I can do it any day of the week. I just really like talking about it. But you know, these videos don't get that much love on my channel. So hopefully this video is the one that changes that. But anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.